What's up guys and welcome to today's video. Before we jump into the content, I wanna give you guys a brief explanation because things have been a bit chaotic and I realized that both the last video and this video will seem a bit confusing. Essentially, this past weekend, I went on the Smokies trip with the GT3. I kind of treated it like my birthday weekend, so I tried to take a break from editing since Mike was actually using this time to go on vacation because things are about to get crazy with Formula Drift coming up in like two days. So originally my plan was to get back and just churn out the video to upload from the Smokies trip because I thought that that would be really enjoyable content, but getting back from being away, uh, it's been super chaotic. So I chose to upload the next video and the last video of the Turbo S and you guys are going to figure out why at the end of this video, which was filmed weeks ago. Enjoy. Yeah. Welcome to today's video, guys. I have a confession to make. Before I even got this car, uh, I already had wheels ordered and they came like a day after I got the car. Instant gratification, didn't have to wait. I'm excited. I think you guys are gonna like them. If you remember when I made the video about the car, the wheels that I picked to me were like the lesser of the evil um, in terms of choices because there were some that were like more expensive and kind of cool, but there's none that were just satin black, which is what I wanted with this car. I'm really going for the gangster look, you know? all black, everything. Thought that'd be cool. <laughs> Mike's dying behind the camera. So in this box, we have my very first set of Voss and wheels, but specifically, it's a collaboration wheel made for Champion Motorsport. If you're not familiar with them, they make a lot of really cool Porsche stuff. And of the cars that I've seen online, uh, this is pretty much exactly what I would want in style for this car. You know, with the RS6, I kind of wanted something a little bit different because I didn't like a lot of the styles around. Or for me, if I had to pick my ideal wheel, this would be it. I think this is technically my first aftermarket center lock wheel. I never pulled the trigger on wheels for the GT3 RS because I honestly love the stock ones. But let's be honest, I don't know what the f Porsche was doing. The nope. machined is not it, Chief. Mm -mm. These though are sick. Um, Champion Motorsport had a set of these on a chalk car that I loved and they were like a translucent uh, kind of smoked color and it looked great on chalk but I, I really want to just have the brakes pop. The yellow accents I want to be the first thing that draws you to this car between the stitching, the seat belts and the brakes. So I went with my gut and I went satin black. What do you think Mike? I think it's gonna look absolutely fire. I heard it from the man himself, the fitment guru. We gotta, we gotta be like what's that, what's that show that we used to watch when we were younger? Um, not MTV Cribs, what's the other MTV show, but it's with cars instead? Pit My Ride. Pit My Ride, Mike's like our resident stance expert. <laughs> he comes out, he's like, that is legitimately fire. Yeah, you're missing a chandelier. So anyway, uh, fit and finish looks excellent on these. Um, they're designed around stock tires. A lot of people, when they get new wheels for these cars, they don't wanna buy new tires, so that's cool. I could have gone an inch bigger, but I would have had even more rubber band tires. Honestly, I'd rather go with more of kind of like a, an aggressive, like kind of meaty tire track look. Um, it was something I deliberated on for a while because once I lowered the car, I didn't know if I wanted the heck of flush look or if I wanted kind of the, the GT3 RS track stance. These wheels are factory staggered, which I think is pretty cool. Uh, it's not like always all wheel drive with the same ratio. Um, the car drives more like a rear wheel drive car, uh, but it is all wheel drive. And you can see it's just, man, I love just like a nice concave. I feel like yeah. if you have a monoblock wheel, it's gotta have a nice little concave. Um, and these should be a fair bit more aggressive than the stock wheels. So fitment wise, we should be a little bit better. Can't obviously run spacers because they're center locks, but um, I'm excited. I always get nervous changing center lock wheels because you have to have like a torque wrench the size of the Eiffel Tower, but pumped on these. And I did go a little bit extra and I got a new set of tires. And I'll explain to you why. So this car comes factory on Pirelli P0s, which is kind of weird because all the Porsches, I was about to say all the Porsches I've had, I've only had one. <laughs> cut that, cut that out of here. I don't know, um, maybe I'm biased, but I did that tire testing event forever ago and they kind of put up against each other the three tires that are kind of in the same family and that's like the Continental Conti Pro Contact or whatever, the PS4S from Michelin and the Pirelli P0, which is what comes in the car. I think the Pirellis look ugly. Yeah, a little and bit. And although it's like a decent tire in the rain and in the dry compared to the PS4S, they kind of suck. So instead of pulling the tires off the stock wheels, I'm gonna leave them on that, you know, drift spares. If I get a flat, if I get another one and I need to put wheels on, I can just take those ones, you know. But I stuck with the stock size because uh, I like the stock profiles. Obviously, if I went bigger, I would have wanted to. But I cheaped out and I didn't get another set of TPMS, tire pressure monitor sensors. So you can just like push back 
the tire, steal them out of those wheels, put them in these boys, which we'll end up doing tomorrow. Mount the new tires, which should spin less, because this car actually spins a crazy amount for a stock car. Like you launch it, it's all wheel drive, and it gets loose. So I'm hoping these will dead hook a little bit better, and I know in the rain they'll be a lot better than the uh, P0s are. I was torn with going with a set of Cup 2s that come on the GT3 RS. It's a common thing for some of the 992 owners to go with, but it rains a lot in Florida, and although the Cup 2s aren't terrible in the rain, these will be way better and it's more dailyable tire and sometimes spinning is fun so got some denibbing to do and then tomorrow we'll get these bad boys mounted up mormon's rolling over in his grave right now that i'm not using a razor to get a flush cut on this the question is where do you stop do you do the inside of the tires or do you just do the outside because you know that they're there you know what i'm saying no dude when you look at a car and you see that they're denibbed you're like oh man i messed that one up like damn they know what's up you have too much time on your hands. Center locks are like the coolest, but also the most terrifying things ever. Um, and the Porsche little toolbox in front comes with a clip to pop these out. And then it comes with the socket that has like a cool little like lock on feature. So you don't have to worry about it popping off. Um, you have to break them loose on the ground and then raise it up. I'm always terrified of like slipping and hitting the car, but uh, yeah. Oh, they make a tool for this, so you don't drop them on the ground. Mm -hmm. People think I'm crazy for putting brand new wheels and tires on it already. Fresh off the dealer floor. I had a nail on the tire. Sucks. Uh, peanut butter stuck all in my mouth. Look, they look amazing. They look 10 times better with tires on them. Oh, I'm yeah. so excited to see them with the little center lock pieces in it because it's gonna make the wheel look even 10 times nicer. So I'm gonna put these on. One important thing to do uh, is use anti-seize and I'll show you where to use them on these center lock wheels. Kind of confusing if you've never done it before, but I did it the first time with Mormon and he helped me. Still gotta denib these, don't judge me. That is terrifying. God, that's gonna look so good. It already does look good, Michael. So, on the center lock piece, uh, one important thing for when you're getting your accurate torque reading is to not look like a tin man, because I'm gonna get this stuff all over me. It happens every time. I know. On this surface right here, this will help it kind of spin just to make sure you don't get an accurate torque reading. And then on the threads themselves, Don't wipe your pants. That is the worst move to make. I know. Is that like a ratcheting function that's in that? Yeah, they're so weird. It's cool. It always scares me so much. Final touch. Yeah, we really need a water deionizer. I have one, I just need to bring it to the compound. You can see it's like getting everything all gross. Yeah, look at that. About a two hour drive over to our friend Billy at Presidential. Uh, he did the correction on my GT3 when Mormon was there and we did the clear bra and everything with the neighbor auto paint guard. Um, so we're going there to drop off the Turbo S. We'll go over some of the stuff he's gonna do on it and check out his shop. <gasps> I love the lizard. Lizard dream. Ooh. Is a spicy girl. Mm.
So it's not bad for it. It'll just wash off. Yeah. Mm. Just a little water. It's probably just salt from the uh, your water tank. Compound water. No bueno for washing cars. Mm -hmm. Alright, we're here with Billy. Billy, good to see you again. See you, man. <laughs> the awkward COVID handshake, right? So, uh, <laughs> I want to do a walk around and have you kind of tell me bad and good with this in terms of paint quality. I know last time we went kind of in depth with the RS. Mm -hmm. Since Mormon's not here and it's just a light polish, since we're going full PPF this time right. around, um, kind of walk me through the differences and what you're going to do. Yeah, um, let me grab my light real fast. So, this will kind of show us um, any issues that might have happened even if they happened at the factory or the port. Overall the paint looks pretty good which is it's pretty typical for for Porsche. Um, their paint's usually pretty good. So what's your what's your go-to for the headlights nowadays? I know before we were torn on doing it because yeah. once you put it on sometimes it doesn't come off. So I still say put it on because mm -hmm. um, basically if you don't do it your headlights are going to get destroyed. Okay. If you do put it on and then it happens to pull the laminate you know when you take them off one day you can still sand them down and re-clear them, and you don't have to buy whole new headlights to get you know, new looks. Um, so basically, on the, the polishing side of things, uh, we don't really go super crazy on the polishing mm -hmm. if we're doing the full car PPF. And what's the reason for that? Well, anytime you're polishing, you're removing paint, mm -hmm. and the clear bra will make it look... If we just wash this and put clear bra on it, it would look perfect. Even if it has little blemishes, like swirls. So does it kind of act like another clear in the sense where kind of, yeah. you won't it, see the it little basically covers mm -hmm. it. Um, but black car, I um, still want to polish it a little bit just to get that extra little gloss and depth out of it, and mostly to clean it. You want to scrub it. I need the the best anti bug coating for the front. I need the bugs to just melt right off. Well, we're gonna do two coats of Halo. Okay. Um, and then, all right, have you used Bee Maker? Yeah. Yeah. So just keep using that. Yep. Uh, it's constantly on yeah. Top the, of the RS is like still fantastic. Yeah. Like every time I wash it, I use Bee Maker, and it seems like it, the coating's brand new on it. Yeah. And we're doing the wheels. Yeah, we'll coat the wheels. Okay, so we'll take those off. Whatever those sort of tire stuff you want to put on, just as long as it's not glossy. Okay. Yeah. Whatever we did on the RS lasted great. Okay. What's the plan with this one? Just, just daily car? Yeah. Yeah. I have that roof rack and carrier, which I forgot to pick up, but <laughs> we can only do that on our own. Is it paint matched? I don't know. Like, is it black? Or? I don't know. I have no idea. I hope it is. If not, we'll get paint it. Ryan from Auto Paint Guard came over and we're doing a film comparison. Right now we're leaning towards Expel on this car. What are the, the what's the name of the Expel that we're talking about? Expel uh, Ultimate Plus. Got it. So we'll use a combination of eight mil and 10 mil films. So we'll probably do like a 10 mil on the hood, maybe even the bumper just for the higher rock prone areas. We could uh, give a little bit more protection. Cool. So Billy was showing us his new Type R and we were discussing uh, film options for my tint. Now he's trying to sell Colette on one of these. Yeah, we're gonna get her in a Make limited edition right one. Now. <laughs> Are you gonna go buy the yellow one? today to take home, so we're gonna find him a car. I'm down. Yeah. Let's okay. do it. Well, to be fair, I think I had this phase maybe three months ago where I was actively looking for a Type R, and then it stopped <laughs> because we had other cars around to drive, and now we have no daily. There's nothing for me to drive. I've you know been without a daily right? for a long time, and now he doesn't have a daily. So we're I'm, five minutes away from buying a car. We can we can go do it. Send it. We'll see. Let him run your credit. I, I at least my credit was already run yesterday for the car that I'm not getting, but I don't want people to know I'm efficient not getting it because maybe I will <laughs> end up getting it. We found out there's rod bearing issues on the GT4, so no go on that. Listen. Wow. Okay. I mm. guess I'm not getting GT4 people. Um. Yeah. So that was sad. Uh, but I guess people aren't supposed to be selling those right now. But. Let's go get it. Next best. Are you, at least I would like to see Are you it down? In I'm down. I'm down to Let's see do it. You're down? You'll give us a ride there? Let's go. We'll okay. go in this. 
Show up in style. I want to see the yellow in person. If I were to get one, it would either be the blue or the yellow, but I really want the yellow. The limited edition one? Why is it special? Um, it has some suspension changes. It's like 50 pounds lighter. Um, the yellow, it's one of 600, I believe. There's only, yeah. only 600 of them made. Um, really, there's not a lot, but, you know. If you get color. it, can you please put PPF on it? We well, have to. We might know a guy. Auto pink guard right there. We're on the space. <laughs> yeah. Maybe. Alright. Or at least right. do what you did. Let me get my camera. Okay. Hello! We are going to pick up the Turbo S today. I'm super excited. Uh, there's been a lot of comments asking what's been going on with my mom's car. Uh, simplest way to explain it, once we got the AC working, if you remember in the initial video we didn't have working AC, so we took the car back to get working AC. Once it had AC, it started having overheating issues. Uh, kind of narrowed it down to not having enough fan because sitting idling just with AC on it would get hot. Once we got it running cool idling, then we realized it had ducting issues. Uh, the original ducting from the car was removed when we did the turbo kit because we had to make room for the intercooler. So we just kind of had to make our own ducting. That plus the race fans that are now on the car, that's running a lot cooler now, about 20 degrees cooler than it was before. Um, I just wanted it to be super sorted before we gave it back to my mom to just be 100% confident in it. And I wasn't just worried uh, that maybe, you know, she'd be sitting in a drive through and overheat with AC on. So um, I'm confident in it now. It still gets a little warm if you're driving like very, very fast on the highway. And I think that's just like air not having anywhere to go. But um, I'm going to give her a car back. I'm going to drive the Turbo S home. And I'm excited to see it. That's a shiny girl. Billy, take it from here and kind of explain you guys some of the little quirks with the car, some of the products that were used for the film, the tint, um, and then some of like the areas where they've used like a thicker film. Um, I find it kind of interesting, and I'd rather have him explain it than me. <laughs> All right, well, first, uh, when we first brought it here, we do a, a full prep. So we used um, clay bar, and then we used some iron removers as well, um, chemically. And then uh, we had a full paint correction on it. Um, I had a few little defects here and there, as far, not like crazy stuff, but like little swirls and uh, dirt nib, uh, factory sand mark, things like that. Took it up front to Ryan where we do all the uh, PPF. So we did a full car XL Ultimate wrap on this. Um, so every panel of this car is wrapped in film. Um, so the rocker, you want to come here. Um, basically from here down is actually a secondary tear off layer because um, this whole piece goes from the bottom of the rocker, comes all the way back and then all the way forward. That's a pretty expensive piece of film. Um, so instead of replacing all of that, um, you can just replace the area that gets beat up the most because uh, the front tires are going to kick up right here and that's the most beat up part of the car. And they then, even come from the factory with a little piece here, like Porsche yeah. even knows. There's usually like a little triangle here, but it doesn't cover enough because the rocks will make it higher than the Porsche 1 will. Yeah, so that was pulled off and replaced with our film. And that, the clarity on the Porsche 1 sucks too. Like mm -hmm. it, it looks like someone put, uh, like you know that cellophane that you get when you like get a new cell phone mm -hmm. like don't put that on the car yeah yeah um, and then same thing back here um, the whole bumper is wrapped and then we have an extra piece here that goes all the way down so that's the leading edge where the tire is going to hit it the most um, so that way same thing we can pull that off once it you know about a year from now or something we can pull it off and uh, replace that one piece instead of doing the whole back bumper because that's all one piece all the way around the back what else did we do oh we did yeah. did the tent yeah, we did a, this is actually a film by um, Steck Films, so it's S-T-E-K, um, and it's a smoke version of a PPF, so it's not like a window tint like a lot of people do, mm -hmm. it's an actual PPF film that's uh, smoked out, um, so that made it, it looks pretty awesome, I think. Yeah. Do people ever do that like on a car? I feel like they look kind of cool. They like darken the color of the car? They're, that's what they designed it for, I haven't seen one done yet, but I saw. Cool. I saw one of the cars like 
PPF in like the stealth stuff that makes it yeah. look like flat. That's kind of neat. Yeah. It works on some colors. Yeah. Yeah. Some of them it looks weird. I would uh, never whites, do it. But whites I it usually look good. good in the. You're not really supposed to do the headlights on the Porsches because it'll, if you pull the film off down the road, it can delaminate the um, the top coat, basically mm -hmm. the UV coat. Um, but at the same time, if you don't wrap them, you're especially if you take it in the mountains, drive behind other sports cars, they're just going to get beat, and then they they look kind of crappy. And then at that point, you have to either replace them entirely, which are very expensive. Um, so my philosophy is always to wrap them. If they do happen to pull the lamination, we can always sand them and re-clear them, and you still have your you know, OEM headlight. Curvature of the film makes it pretty difficult to apply um, without getting you know stretch marks or grab marks and little imperfections in the film. So I think Ryan did these like five times yeah. each <laughs> to get them to where they are. Yeah, we did the XL Prime Plus uh, F red film on the all the glass. Um, so we did a 15% on your side and back glass and then a 70% on the windshield, which is practically clear. I know compared to when we did my GT3, the film technology is like yeah. way better. So explain the difference of this film versus the stuff that we did on my GT3. Um, so what we did on your GT3 was probably like our ceramic film, and this is kind of the next echelon. So um, the infrared is, the ceramic films are still very good, but this just has the extra heat rejection, and it's more of the heat that you feel on your skin. So if you're like driving down the interstate, or down the road, when you got the sun coming through your window, and you can feel it on your skin or your face, it'll reduce that quite a bit. I love the fishbowl look, but like in Florida, <laughs> yeah, no. Nope. I was gonna do the fishbowl on my Civic, and I was like, I just, I just can't do it. I might <laughs> do it. I might do it to the GT3 since I always drive with the windows down anyway. Yeah. Just because I, I want to see the cage. Yeah. yeah that's that's nice. I wanted to basically go as dark as I could, so if I'm picking my nose next to a car, they can't tell. Mm. That's my rule of thumb. So I literally was getting in different cars and picking my nose, and Phil Billy said he couldn't see. Yeah. That was the one. Um, so then after the uh, film was completed by Ryan, then we brought it back over here. Uh, we did G-Technic Halo, two coats on the entire car. Um, we did Crystal Serum Ultra in your door jams, uh, pulled the wheels off, did Crystal Serum Ultra on the wheels and calipers. Uh, dress the plastics on the inner liner. Um, the plastics on the inside of your trunk here are done in XO. Sweet. So those are done as well. Apparently, um, apparently these cars have like really bad batteries too, and they die after like 30 minutes of having the door open, so I need to remember yeah. that. Yeah, and there's like a special little process you gotta go through to get the trunk to even open, which is where the battery is. <laughs> uh, we did the glass as well. Um, so we did G-Technic G1 on all the exterior glass, so that's you know, makes, basically just makes it hydrophobic. You'll probably get like a year out of that. Mm -hmm. um, just three coats on your windshield and then one coat all the way around. And now I'm gonna go take it in the rain. Now we're taking it in a downpour. I'm <laughs> terrified of putting this thing back in the trailer just because uh, I was really sketchy with the straps before, so I made the call to just drive it home this time. On the worst day possible. Yeah, that's okay. It's, it's all just drive. two weeks of our, you know, slaving labor to go <laughs> ruin it immediately. But that's all right. Well, I don't know if and what I'm going to put in this video, but it's actually going straight to the Porsche dealership. Because it's broken! <laughs> so I like best pizza in town. Oh yeah, maybe. I think we're alright. Who says 911s aren't useful? I'm sure this whole Porsche thing's been a little confusing. I don't really know how this whole video thing actually wound up, but uh, I wasn't joking. We're actually picking it right up from getting PPF'd, bringing it right back to the dealer. Uh, they're waiting on parts. I think the whole PDK unit, AKA the transmission on this thing is bad. Um, it's just been shifting weird and saying the trans is overheating, but the weird thing is it'll say it like right after I started driving two minutes ago. So I'm hoping it's just a faulty sensor and the transmission's actually fine and maybe the faulty sensor is making the car think that it's at a different trans temperature and changing the shifting characteristics, but it'll kind of act like the Mustang did when the Mustang had a bad trans tune on it. So hopefully it's software related. Um, but yeah, it just hasn't driven right and haven't modded it yet. 
haven't really even driven it hard just because it scares me that it just, it doesn't feel like it's shifting right. Um, so dropping off the dealer, we get another loaner car. This is loaner car number two. I don't know if you guys will be able to hear it in the video, but the trans kind of sounds like a fire truck sometimes. Like there's like a servo that's stuck or something. You hear it? Yeah, it's like whiny. Big sad. Even a bigger sad. Arson service to the left. Dude, the service thing to have here is crazy. Really? You thought I had nice garage doors? Wait till you see these things open. It's sick. Oh, I've seen them go up super have fast you? before. Film yeah, it, film yeah. it, because they're going to go up before you can even get on camera. Ready? Ready? Get ready for it. Yep. Yeah. Ready for it. Yep. No. Shoo! Where the f is my loader? Where's the Panamera? I am so stupid. Dude. Yo, uh, this auto start stop thing, I know the EPA is mandating it, but it's the worst thing in the world, dude. It's horrible. I hate it. I hate it, dude. <laughs> All these buttons. Bye, car. See you again in freaking millennium. Yep. Big sad. Before the video's over, there's a couple things I thought I might address. Obviously, there's been a lot of financial comments based on the last one. I thought I made it pretty transparent, um, but I actually bought that R6 Avant outright. So what I did, I took that R6 Avant and essentially sold it, put all that money towards the Turbo S, which effectively made the payments very, very little, having a very minimal effect on cash flow when there is going to be a lot of expensive cash purchases at the compound now that I have a big facility that I'm trying to restore. What bums me out the most is I actually did have a lot of parts on deck and a lot of mod videos planned when I got the Turbo S, but pretty much immediately after getting the car, the transmission was acting weird. And the Porsche dealership that I went through, South Orlando, has been amazing and they've worked with me, even so much as ordering the parts for the car before I brought it there because I had a limited window when I could bring my car to get PPF'd which is why I did that before dropping it off at the dealer, so the dealer was waiting on parts anyway. So rather than sitting at the dealer, I got corrected, PPF'd, and coded. Now, like I said, fast forward, Porsche's been great. They've still been communicating a lot, but unfortunately, we have been waiting on parts to get sent over from Germany. And I think they're even like air shipping the parts over on their dime, but I think we have one of the first ever broken Turbo S's. I haven't heard of anyone else having any issues, so it's not like something they're prepared or were expecting, and hopefully it's something simple, something dumb, but unfortunately, I probably still won't have the car for a bit. I was planning to take it up to FD Atlanta with us. That's not gonna happen. I'm probably gonna take the Panamera loaner. But it's super hectic here. We're last minute doing a bunch of stuff with the S15. The guys have been crushing over the weekend while I was gone at the Smokies. So I don't know if it's going to be an S15 related video for the next one or the Smokies video. I guess whichever I have time to edit first. But I appreciate you guys watching this video. I know it's a little all over the place. But I honestly just picture it as a fun filler video so I can catch back up on life. Thank you for understanding, and I'll see you soon. When you say